we're gonna go try to get some 50-50 shots, half above water, half underwater, with my new GoPro 5 dome that allows us to do half and half shots. Um, we're gonna be shooting some alligators, and yeah, you're gonna get to come along and see how we do it. Okay, Allie, so what are we doing right now? Good eye, mate. <laughs> we're searching for gators. I'm sweating, I'm sweating out here. Like 95% humidity. Oh, there he is right there, dude. <laughs> he was always there. He never left. <laughs> oh, wow, that's interesting. Okay. How come we didn't see him when we were here five seconds ago? Just be ready. I'm going to bring him in. Okay, stop. 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 He's not going to. He'll come back. Oh, he's gone. Is he already? You know what I think we need to do, Jeff? What? I think, uh, you know, we should spice it up a little bit. Maybe get rid of the stick. Maybe get in the water. Oh, he's back. Try it again. <laughs> okay. Let's let him get closer, though. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, go, go see uh, uh, one, of, one of my friends that Lori introduced me to, Kenan. Uh-huh. And his buddy, Kyle. They okay. have a bunch of these, as well as the more aggressive species, crocodiles. Really? Yeah. Where are they? Are they close? Would you be willing to get in the water with them? Um, yeah, if the water's clear and I can see them. Let's see if we can do that soon. I think that would be interesting. Okay. Right? So you want to head to this guy's property. He's got crocodiles and alligators, and he uh, has... From what I understand, Kyle's got like 200 crocodiles. 200 crocodiles. And Cannon has like 200 reptiles wow so they so you your does he have clear water that we can get in the water with the crocodiles i believe he does and he'll let us i believe he will we may have to sign a series of waivers <laughs> well i don't mind i just do that all the so, time i believe he will okay you don't want to get in with a real big one yeah well we'll get in with one a reasonable size one but first yeah i want i want to introduce you tell uh, me tell me your name kenan harkin k-e-n-a-n h-a-r-k-i-n Camp Kennan is the name of my house. It's kind of a name that my friends have given to my house. All my action sports buddies from the BMX and skateboard days would come over and be like, it's like camp. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is. like we got all sorts of things to do. First, I want you to show me because my mom, I have African spurs. Yeah, I was stoked to hear that. So I want, I want to go show the African spurs because my mom, I bought her an African spur that was uh -huh. like this big yeah. as a baby, not realizing how gigantic they got. Ah, uh, see, that's a common mistake. That's why I exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I exist. That's what you took care of this weekend. Yeah, yeah exactly. I watched you live. You watched it, yeah. yeah. So that's the big thing is yes. people buy these cute little African tortoises and they grow into like 200 pound beef. So let's oh, yeah. go show you some of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, Where they come um, from naturally? These Where? guys live in an area of Africa right along the fringe of the Sahara Desert, south of the Sahara Desert called the Sahel and you know just drought and all these kind of situations politically that kind of hurt people and it trickles down to the animals because if it's between feeding my family and saving a tortoise I think people are always gonna try and save their families of course. the actual name is the sulcata tortoise yeah and that's Latin for sculpted so I mean you touched on a really good point Jim like you know they do they look like they're sculpted out of wood or stone uh, I just, uh, I think they're some of the coolest animals and they're actually the third largest tortoise on earth. They're the largest continental tortoise. The other two species, the Galapagos and the Aldabra tortoises are larger, but are from islands. Okay. The Aldabra atoll and the Galapagos as well. My whole thing here at Camp Cannon is about giving the animals space uh, to behave naturally. Yeah. Um, these are exotic reptiles, so they don't belong in our, in our ecosystem, but in captivity, they really are rewarding animals. Well, I, want to, I want to see your Galapagos story. Let's do it, man. We're uh -oh. talking about large We're species. The oh. uh, but there's Darwin and Socrates, and these are the two Galapagos tortoises that I keep here. So, so Nostradamus is going to be down there. You guys got to meet Nostradamus, man. He's pretty rad. Very cool. He's an Aldabra tortoise, so I was mentioning there's the Galapagos tortoises are very large, one of the largest species, and the Aldabra. Generally, the Aldabras will grow larger, but there are some islands some subspecies of Galapagos from certain islands there that do get, that match the Aldabra size. So it's a okay. toss up between which is the largest tortoise on earth. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh wow. 
Well, that's a very beautiful shelf. Look yeah. That. Don't wow. don't tell anybody, but this is my favorite tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell the other kids. I don't He's want not them recording to right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, watch this. Watch this. So you just gently touch him, and you just give him a scratch. Is that amazing? You could come on over here. Check this out. Come on in. Yeah. No, no. Are you a little nervous around no, animals? All right, because no. th these are the most benign animals you can right. imagine. You so just animals. gently put your hand out here. I know, right? And then come on in and give him a scratch. So he loves, he loves to have this kind of interaction. And so, you know, you can sit there and try and hypothesize, like, oh, why does he like it? Uh, is it because birds pick ticks off of them and do this and do that? And then I was talking to my good friend Larry Wood, who's a marine biologist who studies turtles and tortoise, uh, sea turtles. And he's like, well, Kenan, what if it just feels good? <laughs> and I think that's it. The simplest answer usually is the correct one. I think it just feels good. Yeah. Affectionate yeah. Jeb, you want to check it out, man? Come on down. You yeah, gotta, you have to pet You got to pet my turtle head. Is it a boy or a girl? <laughs> it is a male. And, I, and usually you don't know that until they're about 200 pounds. And this animal right now is about 100 pounds, but he showed me. He flashed me. Oh, he showed me so the good. He showed, he showed me. Too much into that? Uh, no, it wasn't anything weird. I don't. When you guys leave, I don't do any weird stuff here. But, but you know, dad, they, you know, they will. You know, they will avert their their penis uh, every now they're and again. Creepy Sometimes looking. Look I've seen videos. They're creepy. They're looking. crazy. It looks like one of the creatures from Alien. Yeah. Really? It's, it's like a Geiger strange. painting for sure. It's a strange. It's a strange thing. phallus. And it is half the size of the tortoise. What? Yeah. yeah. It's massive. Yeah, it's, wow. it's they have to be because there's no flexibility. So here. Nostradamus is a proud man. Proud, proud man. <laughs> anyway, the other cool thing about Aldabras and tortoises in general is like they, you know, they can survive long periods like we talked, but they found in Aldabra way out at sea, a boat saw it just floating. Yeah. It had barnacles attached to it. So it had been in the water for quite some time. And it's time. still alive. Totally alive, totally fine. They Bobby, float? They float. That's and that's another. Oh you know, wow! So uh, that's then they could easily they could float easily under. have just floated, wow. and then boom. Who wants to go in with a large carnivorous lizard? Okay. That's Jeff. I think uh, all of us. And uh, who doesn't want to go in? Well, so I don't want to. <laughs> I just don't want to freak him out. He he and I have built up this relationship over the last uh, okay. three years. Slinky belonged to um, some folks up in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's legal to buy these. This is an Asian water monitor. It's the second largest lizard on Earth. Okay, next, next to, to Komodo. Komodo dragon first. Watch your head, Jeb. You're a tall fella. Um, so Slinky here, it was bought as a little hatchling for 50 bucks. And in less than four, in less than four years, you get a large lizard. Now, I've not been bitten by Slinky. I don't want to find out. <laughs> I'm not one of these uh, animal guys that likes to get bit on camera. Yeah. It's about not getting bit. Yeah. Oh! 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 Feel what it's like. Look at this. Nice. See that? But that's trust. But this guy, this is some fat fella. And now this wasn't even possible for me to do for a long time. And now he's got a lot of trust for me. And we're going to put him down and watch this. As is, he's a water monitor. So I built this oh, wow. for him. And look at that. Is that cool, Bo? That's super cool. Man, he is the raddest lizard ever. He'll be about eight foot long when done growing. Wow. And so, how old is he now, you said? He's only four. Four. Okay. So, I mean, that's a big lizard in four years, bro. Awesome. They're just amazing. Yeah, and I had a uh, I had a savanna monitor when cool. I was a kid. Yep, they're great lizards, yeah, man. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, they're from a dry climate. Uh, they're, they're, you know, a savanna species, so they're going to be a grassland species monitor. But they're they're great. He's You're new, so he's just checking you out. <laughs> And as long as you relax and just let him do his thing, he knows you're not food. And he's just like, who is this new person in my home? <laughs> yeah, when I was a little kid, I used to catch rattlesnakes and, and cool. kind of keep them as pets. Yeah. Around six years old, I was really into rattlesnakes. For no some way, reason. dude. And I learned early on that as long as you don't come off as a threat, they have no reason to want to hurt you. Well, that's, you know. They know they can't eat you. You're too big. You're too big. It's always defensive. It's always defensive. It's always defensive. If you don't make them feel like they need to defend themselves, then they're totally cool. And and the, the most time, the most, the most often when people try to kill snakes yeah. is when they get bit by them. Of course, yeah. It's, that's when most bites happen. Itself. That's when most bites happen. Okay, we just finished at Camp Kennan's place where we got to see a bunch of amazing, massive tortoises and some big lizards, which was really quite cool. Now we're headed to a location with a lot of crocodiles. And I've been wanting to get in the water with crocodiles for years. So it's really kind of nice to have this opportunity to learn more about crocodiles, crocodile behavior, and hopefully be able to get in the water with them. Um, yeah, so you're going to be coming along with us and see if they'll actually let us get in the water. I, I hope so. I hope so. That'd be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kyle. Yes, I Hey, Kyle. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you're the one with all the crocodiles. 
fish eaters they'll still bite a person oh for sure again i mean they just see they're so conditioned almost everything is food yeah. Yeah. you do have smaller ones yep and you could go swimming with the smaller ones yes do you have an area to swim with them yeah really mm -hmm. where where do you do that oh a pool oh little babies so what i could even do is probably grab uh that's a big one in here yeah. that guy you just swim with him if you want okay but the thing is, is See, he's super food aggressive here. Yeah. But once you move him, he's going to be a different animal. Okay. No, sorry. 100 crocodiles. 100 crocodiles. 15 or 10 came in at about 15 alligators. Oh, okay. Yeah. So more sorry. crocodiles than any. Yes, yes. And so each one of these little dens here, little these little beds are are a breeding ground for alligators and crocodiles. Yeah. Okay. I started to tell you, er, early in my career, I had the opportunity to work on a research project down in Everglades National Park, mm -hmm. and part of my job was going with a group of people and going into the Everglades at midnight, on the night of the full moon, yeah. literally catching alligators. Okay. Not once did we have an alligator that came to us. Every alligator didn't want to have anything to do, yeah. do with us. Now, you go to a place where people go fishing all the time, a boat ramp, and they're constantly tossing their carcasses and everything mm -hmm. to, you know, to an alligator. Those alligators, when they see people, Our they're, condition. Yep, they're, they're looking, here comes, here comes the grocery yeah. man, let's go over to it. And that becomes the most dangerous situation. Yeah. Here you are in the middle of the Everglades and nothing's bothering you. So. Yeah. Okay, get this stuff. yeah so this is and anyone who wants to take care of animals is cool. Yeah. You know, it's, it, these animals, a lot of people see this and they're like, oh my God, it must be destroyed. And that's what the problem with people are. When they see something that scares them, our first response is to kill it. You know, if you're scared of a snake, you kill it. If you're scared of an alligator, you kill it. If you're scared of a shark, you kill it. Yeah. And it's cool to see people who see an animal, are kind of scared of it, and then go, you know what, I want to learn more about that creature. And yeah. then once you learn more about that creature, you realize, oh, wait a minute. Actually, you don't now, kill it. <laughs> well, I mean, if you get a small one, if we get one that's like no yeah. bigger than us. Let me should... show you this one. Oh, that's a yeah, perfect. That's a perfect little guy. I can catch that one up. You think that one would work? Mm -hmm. Hey, Jim, what do you feel about this guy? Oh, this this guy's a little good one, huh? Yeah. That's like a perfect what size. Is this? I mean, beautiful. Yeah, that's that's very doable. Be careful. 